Well, hello, Steve Tilston. <laughs> hello, Maggie Boyle. <laughs> <laughs> Great to see you, and thanks hello. ever so much for having Kitchen Songs into your yeah. home. It's, it's really lovely to be here. Kitchens have loomed large in your life. I mean, really, everything with your family, there, there was everything was happened in the kitchen. It's really. definitely, and yeah. Not everything, but I mean, a lot of stuff. The it was central all, place. It was, it, well, yes, it was the, the fulcrum, if that's the right word. Oh, yeah. that's a good word. I'll have yeah. to look it up. <laughs> Yeah, well slipped in there, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> That's as good as it gets. <laughs> do you um, do you use the kitchen for for music, or what do you what do you use it for? Well, mostly um, mostly cooking. You know, I'm uh, kind of I do my, my, my oh, yes, food's quite cooking. important to but you, isn't it? It's very important to me. And uh, but you know, sometimes I. Um, uh, not so much since uh, Marg's retired, my wife's retired, because um, she spends a lot of time in the kitchen. But I used to um, um, bring the guitar down quite a bit when I got a new song. And it's, it's great to... I, I think it's just the the ambience and the um, the acoustics, the ring in the kitchen. You get, the, you get something back, yes, don't you? Yes, you do, especially the with the guitar. It's kind of... Um, really very incisive you know mm. if you're not feeling too incisive yourself you know it's kind of <laughs> yeah that's uh, yeah i'm all for them <laughs> <laughs> it'd be great to talk about some of your some things uh that i do that i don't know about you I'm, I'm sure that there'll be some one or two things like that will will emerge today and that'll be uh that would be interesting right. but um I'd like to refer back to something that you said on your first album sleeve as far as i recall about your your songwriting, your arranging uh, more than more than your writing, um, in that you, if I'm not wrong, you like to think of your guitar as a piano. Is that still the case, well, or is, well, it's it's kind uh, of in, in a way, yes, it is because when I first, I mean, I, before I had a guitar, I used to pick out um, tunes on the piano. My my grandmother showed me how to vamp. Uh, these foolish things, you know, da -da 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 -da. and um, so when I got a got a guitar, I was always drawn to that uh, the 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 finger style way of doing it because um, you could have the independent uh, voicings and on the guitar, and um, obviously a lot of the that's where a lot of the folk guitar styles have come. I should imagine the ragtime has come mm. as much from piano music as, as guitar music. I mean, obviously, when I first started, I was so into the guitar, and I was into all the, you know, the, learning the rock and roll riffs, the Chuck Berry and the Buddy Holly and all that kind of stuff. I loved that because they were playing their own mm. lead breaks. And I did have an electric guitar, and um, but it was always still... I think it was a revelation when, um, you know, hearing Scotty Moore as well, because mm. you could hear he, was, he wasn't just... He was playing fingerstyle electric guitar, so I was always drawn to that. What's your very first musical memory? Um, well, my my grandmother, she she my my mum's uh, mum. She was just a great pianist, you know. And she would, uh, I mean, we d I did do the old thing of sitting around the piano on a Saturday night mm. after. Salad, the tin salad, much lamented tin tradition, salmon eh? and pasta salad cream, you know, and it was kind of then, yeah, then and you know she would play the piano and um, we'd we'd sing along and she was she had that facility to be able to, you know, hum me a tune and she could play it and I've yeah. always I, I always loved that and I hope that I've kind of to a certain extent I've got that I've not got anywhere the facility that she had. You've so, you, you've mentioned a few of them um, just a moment ago, but. Um, what other strong influences did you have as you were in, you know, starting to, to create music and did it include any what traditional folk influences at all? Well, I did, um, I had an, an old, a friend's older brother had um, an album that um, was Jack Elliott singing Woody Guthrie songs right. and I was just starting to think about playing you know getting rid of my electric guitar and um getting an acoustic guitar and i've always i was always drawn drawn to the acoustic guitar. i remember joe brown seeing joe brown the brothers play when he did some of his acoustic stuff and uh that i just love the idea of the uh, guitars with a, a sound hole and the vibrations and so um um 
As regards traditional music, um, I wasn't exposed to a huge amount of it, really. No, I mean, it was kind of... Uh, was it when you met... You met folk clubs. Is that when, I when think, it happened? I think that's. I think that's when it. Yeah, when it happened. Yes. So it, basically, the folk revival in the sixties. That's when I um, got exposed to it, and I didn't particularly want to go to a folk club, but I was taken down there by by a friend, an older friend, and uh, just. Exp- in fact, Hedy West was the first person when I went to a folk club, and I saw this wonderful. She, yeah, yeah played the, the banjo, and I thought. This is just such beautiful music. So I went again, and I, and I thought, "Where's that American girl with a banjo? Why is she not?" I thought she was coming every week. <laughs> and then when I saw, you know, Bert play, and um, it just really things started sort of uh, fitting into place. And it was it, it, interesting enough. It was only a couple of weeks after I'd seen Bob Dylan at the local um, at the Leicester de Montfort Hall. So. Um, it was kind of, um, for me, a big... Um, Wonderful time, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. And Bert just happened to have, um, call up, you know, John Renborn, and then this uh, Beverly, who became Beverly Martin. The three of them sang, and I remember Beverly sang this um, Empty Bed Blues, which is one that I learned from this Josh White album. <laughs> and it was just stunning, it was just stunning. And uh, I knew then what I wanted to do in life, you know, that yeah, was... Yeah, uh, set the level, yeah. for, fantastic. Yeah. Can we talk a bit about um, your songwriting, which has yeah. gone through many different phases, hasn't it? Because you had the early sort of stripped-down acoustic... Yeah, uh, yeah. And I think it's style. coming round full circle. In well, you have, you yeah, have. Yeah, but yeah. It, in, in between, you've had, uh, you've had the much more commercial songwriting. In fact... <laughs> go on. <laughs> a, a good friend of mine, oh, who's not go. far from us, here we go. Here we go. has um, <sighs> supplied this e- oh. e- exhibit A <laughs> in for a penny, in for a pound, which um, Steve made. Uh, it contains his single Don't Look Down, which was with uh, Raph Ravenscroft, as I recall. Did he play on it? Yeah, the bloke who did the... Um, Playing sax. It, it was uh, yeah, all big stuff Street, when, when so. I first met Steve. <laughs> <laughs> and Mike Silver's on it too. And you're on it as well, Jessica. Uh, that, yes, it was my, my very brief foray into singing with noisy stuff. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. but, but, you know, it was a very different style of song than... Well, uh, than, yeah. Or some of them were than before and after. Don't I think. suppose it was kind of what what would be termed now adult orientated rock. First commercial record I heard that you did was just reminded me of it, White Horses. <gasps> oh God! You, I remember yeah. you playing me that single when we on our second date or something. Oh God! Oh, oh. <laughs> Surprised that didn't put the kibosh <laughs> on it. <laughs> I remember thinking that wasn't very commercial. It was a bit twee, wasn't it? It was a bit twee. Yeah, because uh, well, <laughs> this is a funny thing. One. Um, Who was the singer? Belinda. Um, Belinda Sinclair. Yeah, she was in some sitcom, wasn't she? Yeah. I'd written this song that I'd um, I'd taken the. Um, Four A's Dolly Suite, you know, which was used for Listen with Mother. There was obviously a big yes. formula thing. <laughs> la da da dee da 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 dee da da dee. Mm. And um, so I wrote, I just nicked the melody and I wrote some words around that about white horses, you know, and all that kind of thing. And um, we did a, I forget who produced it now. And um, anyway, Blinda Sinclair sang on it and Terry Wogan played it and played it to death. Actually said he wanted to make it hit, but. Um, People didn't. It still <laughs> didn't, didn't work. <laughs> still didn't work. That's right. <laughs> oh, okay. Have you identified any um, characteristics or features in your songs that particularly appeal to people who sing traditional folk material? Well, obviously there are. It's 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 kind of. Um, I think if you go out of your way to do to to write a. A pastiche, then a lot of the time I think it's going to fall flat on your face. But um, um, because I think, you know, getting back when you and I were um, operating together, you know, there was, um, uh, how could I not? Uh, obviously we met because I went to that traditional Irish club in um, mm-hmm. in Fulham, um, taken there by Duck Baker. And... Um, 
it's it it's soaked through. You know, I, mean, I loved I loved the stuff, but I wouldn't. I never have pretended to be a, a traditional musician. You know, and um, but um, I've always I've always liked traditional music, and mm. obviously ever since I, I I first set foot in a folk club, I I heard traditional songs. And, mm. you know. But you'd already been uh, nurtured, hadn't you, by Hamish Imlach? And I remember. Um he well, take you round and and then what the main traditional song I used to hear you sing in the early days was Bo- Bo- that's Bo- right Bo- which yeah Scott. absolutely yeah uh, funny enough yeah Hamish took me when I was because um, he used to when I used to live in Loughborough with a few friends and he always used to come and stay with us when he was um, heading down that that way and then um, one time he took me he came he was coming I was living in London that time and. Um, he said, do you fancy coming up north with me? And he got a bunch of gigs actually around this area. I remember we went to Halifax and uh, he was wanting to see, it was obviously, it was, it was Christy Moore because I remember we went to this windswept, these um, high-rise blocks just outside, was it Halifax or Huddersfield? And uh, I remember him taking me up there and I remember seeing all these people lying around, but I don't think Christy was there, but the place was full. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Steve Tilston. <laughs> if you could change one thing about your career or your music, any, anything, what do you think it might be? <sighs> well, I, I, something that still, still rankles a bit um, is that when finding that letter, that you're talking about the letter that was sent to you that got, got, got waylaid. That's right, from for, John for, Lennon, for 30 and that was years or so, yeah. in seventy two. Yeah. Seventy two. I think I, was it in response to um, an interview that you'd had in with Zigzag, Zigzag, Zigzag magazine, where, where yes. you had said that you felt that you might not write so well if you you were rich. That's <laughs> right. Yes. <laughs> John Lennon really didn't like this concept, did he? Well, it no, does. I mean, it was a very friendly letter. It was. Um, it wasn't kind of. He didn't take. I don't think he took umbrage. But um, he, you know, he said that you know this was not the case. That he um, he obviously still thought he was writing great stuff, which he was, you know. And uh, and he said that he'd been poor and now rich, and that As- and, and Yoko who'd been rich, poor, and rich. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, "So what do you think of that?" That's how he finished the. Yeah. Uh, the letter and then left his his home telephone number yeah. so um i would have knowing the um pushy brass necked brat that i was in those days i would have um i would have rung him yeah, i'm sure you would yeah <laughs> <laughs> well steve tilston but... <laughs> <laughs> what's on now then what, what are you up to well I'll just keep Doing the same, I'm, I'm sort of touch wood. I've, I've still got the, I'm, I think I'm at the top of my game, you know, I'm playing still well. The voice seems to be still operating it all right. It certainly is. Obviously, you've had a really fantastic couple of years, really high profile attention, lots of media attention, and at long last, the folk <laughs> award. Uh, what else could, uh, would you aspire to? Uh, and what are you doing? Well, and how did you feel about the folk award anyway? Well, yeah, obviously, uh, it, 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 it's great. Yeah, it's, it's you know, it's it's, it's fantastic, and it, and it and it has um, um, a, a few things that have, have, have fallen to place because of it, you know. And um, so I'd be cherish to say that I wasn't um, pleased to have it. Um, what am I going to be doing in the future? I mean, much the same. It's sort of just I I still. Uh, I love being, love the fact that I'm getting away. You know, I hear am I in my early sixties, sort of uh, still being able to earn my living as a musician. Um, my chops are still good. You know, I'm still playing and singing as as well as ever. And uh, like we saw the uh, Chris Chris Smither, he was, he was saying, said, you know, after sixty, it's all gravy. <laughs> and it's great. You know, it's a great way of putting it. You know, yeah. it's all gravy. So it's it's and it's a nice. A girt dollop of gravy, as, <laughs> as they say in Bristol. Yeah. <laughs> a king girt dollop of gravy. Well, <laughs> I wish you a gallon of it and more. <laughs> oh, thanks, Maggie. <laughs> Thank you, Steve Lovely. Tilston, for Pleasure. having us in, and it's been great to talk to you and, to, and everything. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.